Howdy y'all. Um, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to go and do a uh, review on my 2021 uh, Trek Checkpoint. Um, I'll go over all the details of, you know, the specs on the bike and then also <clears throat> all the different configurations that I've done with the bike uh, to commute to work and then also like earlier in uh, November um, uh, commuting up to or riding up to uh, Denton. Uh, Texas, and then over to Lake Ray Roberts for bike camping. Uh, but then I'll go over all the gear set up, all the different arrangements that I've had it on, and how it's been. Um, now I'm at 1,100 miles on the bike in four months. But uh, keep watching. I'll go over the details. If you got questions or have any comments, uh, leave them below. Uh, and then don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and uh, share with your other cyclists. This is my 2021 Checkpoint SL5. Uh, the Checkpoint comes in an aluminum frame and also a carbon frame, or AL or SL uh, frames. Uh, this one is actually spec'd with 105 components. Actually, it's 105 a cassette. Everything else on it is GRX, uh, that it is a gravel bike. The SL series is actually using the 500 OCLV carbon. There is an SLR frame set uh, that uses 800 OCLV. Front and rear derailleurs are Shimano X8 810 with a 1134 105 cassette. The SL5 is spec'd with an RX600 crank, uh, 46 tooth uh, top gear and 30 tooth on the low gear. The checkpoint comes stock with Paradigm SL tubeless ready rims and then Bon Traeger's GR1 Team Issue tubeless ready tires in 700 by 40. The frame will allow up to a 45 width tire. I don't have the GR1s mounted at the moment. I have some Mavics that I'm using for commuting to work. A uh, little less rolling, or a little better rolling resistance uh, for a faster commute to work. Front and back tire setups are held on by Bontrager through axles. For the hubs, we have Bontrager alloy bearing sealed center locking hubs. In this clip, you can see it's a summer setup, a little lean for just commuting to work. Now on this clip, you'll see that I've got a tri-angle bag set up and my rear back uh, rack uh, for more winter commute. Uh, up front, you'll see I've got a bottle and speaker as well uh, for kind of um, the cooler temperatures. i got to haul a little more gear for when I'm getting to work and uh, haul stuff back. And this is me testing my bikepacking uh, setup before I went on my uh, camping trip up to uh, Denton and Ray Roberts Lake. Uh, as you can see here, I've got everything kind of loaded up as I'd like it uh, for the trip to Denton. The Checkpoint is a gravel-focused bike. Um, I probably use it for about 5 to 10% of that. Uh, majority of my time is used for um, commuting to work. Uh, I work at Trek, so I ride every day that I can. Uh, and then this clip, you can see that I'm taking this off for just a little test. Actually, I'm testing a, a snap mount. So, we can see how bouncy that is. Now that just got kicked off. No cameras were harmed in the making of this film. Here's my bike packing setup for when I was returning home uh, from Ray Roberts' uh, trip. As you can see, it's a little heavier in the back because I wanted to test to see how it felt back there. What I learned from other cyclists is that you usually want to have 
most of your weight forward or on the front forks. Uh, easier to steer, easier to manage. Um, when you have the bike set up like I currently have here, you can see all the weight is going to be on the back end. So if you ever go to ascend or climb um, and stand to do that to power up, uh, the back of the bike is going to start wagging like a dog's tail. It's very heavy. It's going to have all that weight back there. Um, what is nice with the checkpoint, and I didn't do it for this ride, but I've got an adjustment in the back on the, the chain stays where I can slide a, a, a locking unit backwards to make a longer uh, wheelbase so that that happens a lot less. But you will still have that with a lot of weight back in the back. It's me again. Um, so as I mentioned before, the bike I, I use the bike primarily for commuting to work. Do about 15 miles round trip to work. Uh, so it's great for that kind of riding because there are lots of mounts, as you saw. I have the uh, back rack on there on the on the uh, camping trip. I have the front one, so you've got a lot of mounting points if you're going to carry a lot of gear. Perfect bike for it. Um, tires are a bit oversized, kind of kind of commuting because um, there's a lot more resistance in the while you're rolling down the roads, um, but it still gets the job done. I do max out the bike. Uh, if I'm going down a great hill and I'm not carrying a lot of stuff, I kind of max it out about 30, 31 miles an hour. Um, if I can reach that, if it's not a windy day, but I do use it for kind of mainly commuting, uh, just to work. Uh, so it doesn't get all the use of the gravel bikes that should, or as it's produced, but I do love kind of commuting with it cause it gets, the job done with not a lot of issues and can handle a lot of gear if I need to. Um, some of the mods I've made on the, the bike already, uh, I switched out on the stem. You'll see some orange pieces in there. Those were off my old bike, my BMC, my orange uh, wolf tooth stem uh, caps or spacers. Uh, and then I, um, on top of that, I have a K edge mount, which holds my uh, Wahoo up top of there. It just mounts on the top of the stem sticks out over the stem, which is really beautiful to keep the cabin as clear as possible. Um, and then, um, and some of the clips you'll see, I've got black bar tape on, uh, that was our, um, uh, grippy tack tape that I had before. That was great for, um, kind of just riding around in the summer. Uh, it gets a little slippery or bar tape can get a little slippery, uh, sweating hands and stuff like that. Uh, but in some of the clips also, you'll see that I've got this bright orange, our, uh, gel cork, uh, cork tape on there now, which is a little more plush, a little better for gravel riding, a little more cushion, uh, when you go off road and stuff like that. So I swapped that out. And then, um, up front on several of our Trek bikes, um, there's blender mount options. Depends on the type of stem that you have. Uh, but I've got a dual mount up there, so I'm able to light it, mount uh, lights up top, or like you'll see in some shots, I actually have a, a step uh, GoPro mount mounted below or on top of wherever I want to mount the camera. So I have that on there as well. But it's a nice little feature that you can bolt a couple of pieces or mount a couple of pieces up front and kind of keep stuff off the handlebars so your handlebars are pretty clear. It is nice to have the light up top so you don't have something on your handlebar in the way. And then um, on the handlebar, I've got my spur uh, um, handmade like bell, which is really gorgeous. I got the raw version and it's really beautiful. And then on that is the snap mount as well. But up front, it's kind of simple. Um, I do have a couple different bottle cages I keep cycling back and forth in a little dude bag and stuff just for kind of commuting. But it's a, a good all purpose kind of vehicle or uh, commuter for me, which has been pretty nice. Now I'm going to go over the, uh, the feel of the bike uh, and all the different setups and where I ride it. Um, I mean, it is gravel specific, so uh, I've gotten to ride it in quite a few different areas around here that um, 
in northern Texas, we've got backcountry roads that are still not paved. So you'll have some spots that are like larger kind of gravel. Uh, so it can get kind of bumpy and rough. And then you got some little more hard pack pebble size gravel. So I've been able to uh, try it on all kinds of surfaces, which is kind of nice. Uh, on both, the bike feels amazing. Uh, um, there's a huge difference when you go from just a regular um, a tube uh, kind of setup uh, into a tubeless setup. The bike doesn't feel as if it wants to slide out from underneath you as much. Uh, you're able to run just a bit lower pressure, uh, so the uh, bottom of the tire kind of widens out and really grips whatever you're going over. So I'm able to tell the difference while you do that. Uh, and then I can also feel that when I commute as well, because um, riding the same path over and over again, or the same road over and over again, you get used to that feel. Um, and as soon as I just walk from uh, tubes to tubeless, I can feel all that same kind of um, bumps and you know jagged little pieces and whatnot. But once you go to the tubeless kind of uh, uh, setup, then um, those exact same bumps they're smoothed out. Uh, you don't, they're not as jarring or it's not a sharp kind of a bump, uh, which makes for a lot nicer ride, especially on the carbon bike and with the ISO speed and the, uh, um, and the seat too back there. Uh, so it makes it very, very comfortable, very smooth and um, not as jarring. But if you go more to the road setup, um, I was able to get those Mavics on there tubeless and could run it holds 60 PSI, but uh, you do notice those sharper bumps just a bit more, uh, but you could still feel it felt good. It rolled easy um, and didn't cause a lot of hiccups. The pros of the this type of bike, and this is the 21 version, so it's not the 22. Uh, the pros on this one, it's, it's a workhorse. It's very versatile. And as you can see, I can commute to work on it on the roads or whatnot, or if there's any trails or anything like that, I can cut through trails, which is kind of nice. I used my BMC for that back in the day because you could just hop a curb or you know go through some rough terrain and then enjoy that and then hop back on the road. This one does it a lot better, um, slimmer tires, a bit lighter, no suspension on it, but you're able to kind of um, go in different terrains and not uh, be too worried about, oh, am I going to fall over? Am I gonna, is the bike going to slide out from underneath me? Are these tires going to hold? And can I go as fast as I can? On, on the, again, I mentioned on the gearing I've got right now, I top out about 30, 31 miles an hour if I'm really bombing a hill, uh, which is pretty good. Um, but also too, it's it's nice that you can have that transition and not have to worry about, oh, I've got to have so many bikes to do one thing, you know, or certain things. Um, it's great for climbing. Uh, I did on the green belt. It's probably really the only time I use the uh, lower chain ring up front. Uh, hauling all that weight and going over that kind of textured uh, uh, gravel or dirt and grass. Um, I needed a little bit lower gear. So, so that and then climbing the hill is probably the only times that I've really used that lower uh, chain ring. Most of the time I'm in that top chain ring. Um, <clears throat> and the saddle feels real good if you're climbing weighted or not weighted. Uh, the bike, once I had it set up like it is now, comes in at 21 pounds so it's it's a pretty pretty light bike i mean you're only about two to three pounds away from like our amanda or if you go to the high end amanda it's about five seven pounds away so not horrible but you can tell a difference between the aluminum bikes and the carbon bikes which is kind of nice um cons for it is not geared for some real high-end fast riding um i've ridden with the guys on our group rides that are riding kind of the higher end bikes. And I sit behind them quite a bit. I, I, I oh, hold on as best I can behind them. Hard to lead if you're in your front. It's not a very aero bike as well. So 
once you get into that and kind of ride that way, it's not the best bike for that type of riding. So I kind of forgot that they uh, plowed up the road, so it's not the best road back here anymore. It gets quite gnarly and bumpy, but the bike will handle it. I hope I can. Thanks again for watching. Um, hope you like the channel uh, about my trek point and adventures. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll get you some more content. Thanks. Later.